it is because of his mercies that we have not been consumed because his compassion fail it now we start our journey with you on a note of reverence acknowledging the greatness of thy power what must be in place for prayer and fasting to deliver its goods in my life number one and very importantly There's a demand for repentance from things we know displease God in our lives. Repentance is not just confession of sins. It's turning away from it after being forgiven by God. Go and say no more lest a worse than this thing happen to you. In Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13 He that covers his sin shall not prosper But he that confesses and forsakes them Shall have mercy It's not just confessing Confessing and forsaking Then he has mercy Why is this so necessary? For the hand of the Lord is so short that I cannot save and as he has heavy that cannot hear, but our iniquity has a place of between us and God that he cannot hear us, he will not hear us, he will not hear. And without prayer, fasting is religious punishment, religious punishment, it has no value, it has zero spiritual value without prayers, and prayer has no meaning without answers, and sin is a barrier between us and the prayer line. Therefore, begin this episode sweeping yourself naked before the Lord. I don't want to waste my time and energy this 21 days. This and these things don't please me in my life. Jesus, forgive me and empower me to talk. I want a thoroughfare, heavy connectivity these three weeks that will change my life forever. It's so important. It's so important. Without repentance, it will be an adventure of futility. There will not be more to it. There will not be anything to remember. Consciously, intentionally, genuinely, heartily. Come to him as he justifies you, your prayer line opens up in the precious name of Jesus. No one will get to a standstill in this prayer time. Amen. You'll not only be praying, you'll be God will be answering you by his voice, Amen. answering you by his voice. Moses called on God and he answered them by a voice. It's the Lord. He said, I'm the Lord, I change not. You will hear God the clearest way this time. Yeah. Can you hear your loudest amen? Yeah. Repentance is number one point, very critical in having the best of time in this fasting season. If we say we have no sin, we deserve ourselves, but if we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let's take advantage of that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The word says, Turn ye at my reproof. Proverbs 1 23. And I will pour my spirit unto you, and I will make my word known unto you. So there is a turning required. For us to experience the outpouring of his spirit and revelation of his word, which are the two major returns on prayer and fasting. The breaking forth of light and then fresh anointing. But the demand is turn ye at my reproof. 
I will pour my spirit upon you and I will make my words known unto you. Turn. Turn. That I think should be the first thing to do today after this service. You don't wait till tomorrow to line up what things you are set for. You better get set for it. You don't start planning what to do in the exam hall. You put it together before you go into write. Every genuine repentance shall receive free forgiveness. Can I hear your loudest amen? David, the anointed of God, was compared with sin, but repented his way to repentance. You know his story. He committed murder, committed adultery, same time. Same time. He repented in dust and ashes. God restored to him the joy of salvation and restored his dignity because he turned. Because he turned. He said, if I hide iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But when the God has heard me, how? Because he turned and God wrote it off. Every genuine turning, God will write it off. Every genuine turning, God will write it off. Can I hear your loudest amen? He turned and God is taught. He said, I'm the Lord. I change. How do I know he turned? I have found David my servant with my holy oil of anointed him. Turn and I will pour my spirit. He turned. His prayers went up to God. He turned. The anointing was poured on him. A turning is fundamental to experiencing the blessings of fasting and prayer. Grace to turn in truth and in deed back to your God. Receive it right now in Jesus' name. For our fasting and prayer to be profitable, we must refuse to be offended in God. The Lord told me yesterday, and I spoke to our uh, leaders here in church. Stop timing God. Tell them. My time is not in their hand. Their time is in my hand. Psalm 31 verse 15. My times are in thy hand, O God. He will have done it if he needed to do anything. He should have done it by now. Who told you? Who told you? He makes all things beautiful in his time. Stop being offended in God. Don't lose your head. Matthew eleven six. 6. John said to Jesus, Are you truly the Messiah? And you had that come in the prison? What are you doing there? He said, you know me what nonsense you are Messiah. Nonsense. He lost his head. He lost his head. Don't be offended in God. No one can manage your life or my life better than he does. Refuse to be offended. Come acknowledging, come celebrating him. You will keep changing your story. Can I hear your loudest amen? Many have offended because the time they gave God, they gave God time. Do you see students giving vigilators time? They say exam starts at 8 o'clock. They say, no, no, vigilators may not be available. I'll be coming at 11. Then you have marked your paper already. Stop timing God is spiritual foolishness. Just keep following Him. And you keep making all things beautiful in their own time. You are in for the best of time. Come and say, I refuse to be offended in God. If I'm offended in my helper, where will my help come from? Help me, Jesus, never to be offended in you anymore. 
But when you come celebrating him, here is what he said. Psalm 92 verse 1 and 2. It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. To sing his praise. He's the most high God. To tell of his love and kindness in the morning. His faithfulness every night. Then my head shall thou annoy like the head of a unicorn. Come celebrating God. It will keep changing your story. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Then my head shall see my desire upon my enemy. My ear shall hear my desire upon the wicked as it's not against me. I shall begin to flourish like the seed in Lebanon. I a mean, like palm tree and keep scaling new heights and seed in Lebanon. Stop being offended. Come celebrate. If John has said, Jesus, I know you are the desire. You can get me out of this situation. You'll be out of it. Everyone shall be out of every unwanted situation this time. Refuse to be offended in God. Your prayer will have express access. Can I hear your amen? amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? In Psalm 34 verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall not be in my mouth. What did God say? I found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. I will bless the Lord at all times. Zero complaints, zero murmuring. Just blessing the Lord. Because all that you are, all that I am, where we are, where we stand, is all of grace. Can I hear your amen? amen. Your prayer shall not be hindered. Amen. Your prayer shall not be hindered. Amen. Number three, we must engage our heart in seeking to please God and the interest of his kingdom as our priority in this prayer and fast. The young life of suffer one and hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good for him. Let God be at the center of your crave during this time. Let God be at the center of your crave during this time. And you will see the difference in the name of Jesus. 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 The word says in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 19, out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and voice of them that make merry. And I will multiply them, shall not be few. I will glorify them, shall not be small. I will change their status. Now, verse 21. And their nobles shall emerge among them. Their godly shall proceed from the midst of them. For who is he that engages his heart to seek unto me? Seeking after God's interest changes people's level. Be a partaker of this in Jesus' name. Finally, we must define our specific goals. In this forthcoming fast, we must define our specific goals. And it's easier for us to get it by using the guidelines of Isaiah 58 and verse 6 to 14. Let's major in the major. Lord, empower my spiritual life into next level. When it's well with us spiritually, it will be well with us everywhere. For to be spiritually minded is life and peace. We cannot be minded is death. Let's major in God's major for prayer and fasting. It's for empowerment, for dominion. Empowerment for effective city worship and triumphant living. Seeking enlightenment and illumination from the word of God on areas of interest to you. Enough is enough. With an enough is enough drive. There is an answer here waiting for me. Let my life break forth like the morning. Let me see what way out you have made for me. And then it will keep guiding your steps. 
Amen. Let's take on specific issues requiring divine attention. Joshua had gathered together the whole of Judah and they waited on the Lord in the fast for three days. Because the enemies besieged them on every side, there was no natural way out. But God stepped in. Turned his hand against their enemies and gave them open victory. Engage in specific issues of concern to you in this fast. Lay them out. Your health is long overdue for full restoration. Your family is long overdue for full harmony and peace. Your business long overdue for change of level. Your spiritual life is long overdue for a new level. Focus on issues of specific interest to your life in this fast. Um, it will answer us speedily. Amen. Then shall thou call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. You will hear his voice.